Hello everybody, my name's Helen Noble, celebrant of Surrey, and I am here with my weekly tips and tricks of all things ceremonial. This week I'm talking about what it actually is to be a celebrant, and when you Google what's a celebrant, what might come up and why. I'm actually in a different room this time. This is my husband's office. Normally, if you're watching regularly, I'm in my office with the funky background. But as you can tell, we love a bit of wallpaper in this house. Um, so this week, what is a celebrant? Um, where you are in the world might affect what that means. So I'm Helen Noble, celebrant of Surrey, as in Surrey, England, southeast corner, of the UK um, and I tend to just cover the southeast corner of the UK not just Surrey I might go up and down a bit and out have been out to Turkey at some point oh the cat's joining um, at some point might take myself out to Australia for a friend because she's doing renewal of vows and it's their 10 years um, but that brings me to the difference between where you are in the world is different to what a celebrant can do so in Australia, as I mentioned, that's the home of celebrancy. That is where celebrancy started officially. Um, but if you were to look on Wikipedia, for example, it will say that a celebrant is someone or a person that takes a ceremony or a rite of passage. So that person can be anybody. It can be your mates. Those of you that will remember the sitcom Friends, Joey took one of the friend's wedding ceremonies, um, he became the celebrant. Because it can actually be anyone, so some people do get a friend to do it. And at the time, it seems a really good idea. And their friend's like, yeah, I'd love to, thank you so much. And then eventually, as it approaches, they're like, actually, oh, there's quite a lot to do. Oh my goodness, am I gonna be responsible for the whole ceremony? Oh my goodness, this is your wedding. Um, um, um. <laughs> So then I then I start getting the phone calls from either the couple saying we've actually asked a friend but they're getting a bit overwhelmed and they're getting a bit cold feet can you help at all or I get phone calls or emails from the person that is the person doing the ceremony going oh my goodness please help <laughs> um which I do uh, so I do ghostwriting for the person so if, for example, you have a joey, if you know what that means, um, you have a joey that is taking your ceremony, but actually they aren't really qualified to take it, as in, for example, for me, uh, 11 years next month, completed my 11th year being a celebrant next month. Um, and obviously, the more you do, the better you get, and the more you practice, the more honed your skills get. So I am actually a fairly experienced and expert celebrant um and i do do writing for people that reach out to say i've been asked i didn't want to say no i absolutely am honored to pieces but it has dawned on me what a big job this is and i want to get it right can you help so i as a celebrant as helen noble celebrant of sorry do do ghost writing for the person that is taking the ceremony should the couple not want to um get a profession, professional in. Um, but it means that A, the couple get exactly what they want, B, the person delivering it can share the load, can make sure they are delivering the best they can because they have hired me um, to do the best I can for them. And so they get to deliver this amazing script, which I've written for them, having got to know the couple. So it's not that the couple don't know, they don't, the couple don't go, wow, James, you pulled that out of the bag. It's because James has actually hired me to write it for him. <laughs> um, but the couple are in the loop. It's not like they've just pulled it out of the bag and it's been amazing. Although one guy was like, could you just keep this between us? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so you do get celebrants that will support the journey, but won't necessarily be there at the time and they're ghostwriters. Um, so I do that for 
not for other celebrants. I don't ghostwrite for other celebrants. I know there are celebrants that use ghostwriters for themselves. So keep keep an eye on that um, because it might be you get one tone and then when you get the script, it's another tone. Um, and that works for them. Personally, for me, I'm like, but that's my superpower. I love the actual celebranting of being a celebrant. I would not outsource that. Um, because I love the whole process. So I just can do more of it when I'm ghostwriting for their person. But if you're in Australia, the person, the designated celebrant, is legally binding. So that can't be delegated to the friend. So Australian celebrants, for example, don't necessarily need to ghostwrite because they are the registrar, as is the equivalent in the UK in England. So in Australia, the celebrant can marry you and celebrancy sort of started there in the first place. Um, and in Scotland, the celebrant can marry you. In England, there is a movement in the um, House of Parliament to try and get the celebrants to be able to marry you. That's a whole thing that's going to take a while because at the moment they're sort of um, looking to the humanist society to legalise the humanists rather than all celebrants. Because if they just made the humanist society the legally binding, then that's a, it's quite similar to having a priest because they would come with their own doctrine because they are part of a society and they are part of a charity and they have signed up to that doctrine. So a, um, a humanist beliefs will bring a humanist doctrine to your ceremony, which is fine if that's what you want. It's absolutely fine. Um, but the downside is, is actually if you are a bit spiritual or you want Granny Pip to um say a bible reading or your best mate is actually a vicar but you don't want her to be on priest duties you want her to come and be a wedding guest but it would make your day and it would fill her heart with joy if perhaps at the end she could say a prayer for everybody as an independent celebrant which is what i am as an independent celebrant i belong to you i belong to the client so whatever it is that you wish want desire vision style doctrine that you want to have at your wedding for your vows for your marriage for what you believe i will facilitate that whether it's cross culture whether it's dual heritage whether it's just a dusting of something and um, be that hindu muslim jewish I've, I've done them all. I haven't done a Greek Orthodox wedding. I have done a Greek Orthodox funeral, um, which was surprisingly loud. <laughs> um, but only one half was and the family weren't. And, you know, so we mix it all up. But because I'm not a humanist, it means I can embrace faith. And for me, one of my, I probably should make it a hashtag on the old Instagram. Um, okay, so one of my hashtags is worry to wonder. But my other hashtag, which is in my head, which I need to get out there, is make space for faith. Whether your faith is in each other, whether your faith is in humanity, whether your faith is in fate or God, or the fact there is something bigger than ourselves, whatever is your faith, I can make space for it as I'm an independent celebrant, so I belong to you. So they're the things to look out for. If you're in Australia or Scotland, a celebrant is legally binding. If you're in England, a celebrant at the moment is ceremonial only, but there are two kinds of celebrant. There is a humanist and an independent. There are other celebrants that call themselves a civil celebrant. That's just an independent celebrant. It's just the particular school of thought they came from. But basically, a humanist celebrant has the humanist doctrine, a priest has religious doctrine, an independent doesn't come with a doctrine, but will make space for faith, however that looks like to you.
So that's why I chose to become an independent celebrant and I trained with the Fellowship of Independent Celebrants. Oh no, the Fellowship of Professional Celebrants because they're independent. Um, the FAPC, which is a little tree of life if you're looking. So if you're looking for a celebrant, um, personally, I would start with the Fellowship of Professional Celebrants and their little logo looks like a tree of life. And you will find on their address book all the independents. Um, another school of independent celebrants is the Academy of Modern Celebrancy. Um, and they are also independent celebrants. And I've worked with both of them. I trained with one and I was a trainer for another. So I absolutely endorse both, support both. Um, but the thing to look out for is in England, we are ceremonial only, which I really like. I like the fact that I don't have the weight of the law behind me and that you don't have to turn up stone cold sober and you don't have to have a 50 minute weird random questioning about your mother-in-law to be's middle name. No word of a lie. One of my groom's questions from the registrar was, what is your future mother-in-law's middle name? And he was like, um, and he suddenly thought, hang on, my fiance's middle name is Anne. Maybe she's Anne. So he said, Anne? And they said, with or without an E? In a very serious question. He's like, oh, sweet Lord, is this going to affect whether I actually get married today or not? Um, and it, it does because they're not necessarily worried or concerned about the correct answer. They're watching for whether it's a genuine answer. So if you've been together forever and not actually ever given two hoots about your mother-in-law's middle name, because why would you? Um, they are just checking for a genuine reaction to that question. Like, oh, I don't know. I've known her since I was 10. We met at school. Um, so don't get worried about the legals. But for me, it's nice not to have them. I'm like, go and get married. It's 50 quid. It takes 10 minutes go out for a boozy lunch on the Wednesday and then we will have a completely relaxed, by all means have some champagne at breakfast. Um, we can even have a gin and tonic toast halfway through the ceremony if you like, or when you're having a little reading, you might be like, oh, let's have some champagne. Um, because I'm not legally binding, because you've done it, because I'm an independent celebrant in England. That's the things you need to look out for. So, to summarise, when you are looking for a celebrant, you need to kind of clock which country you're looking to get married in because a celebrant in England can do your wedding but cannot marry you. So you go and get your legals, your two by two, done at your registry office that you pay your council tax to. Stick with your local registry office, the one that you pay your council tax to, and ask for the two by two registration of marriage and you have your 28 days notice and you go in and you show your ID. I am who I say I am. He says who he say, he say, blah, blah. he says who he say. He is who he says he is. Blah, blah, blah. That sounds like she sells seashells on the seashore, doesn't it? Um, and she says who she says she is. And you do your checks. They do their checks. They check who you are and blah, 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 blah. You have your check. Answer a couple of questions. Sign, sign. Done, done off we go. Then on the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday, at dawn, at dusk, whenever, because I don't have the strictures of being legally binding, we can do your wedding with anything you want to throw at it to incorporate any faith, any spirituality, any, any doctrine, any school of thought, any content, any lyrics, and yes, as the cogs are turning, a registrar will check the lyrics of your music that you have chosen, that it doesn't contain anything that isn't, you know, nothing that isn't completely PC. So, for example, you couldn't have Robbie Williams' Angels. Not that you would necessarily have that at a wedding, but angels are a holy thing and therefore you couldn't have that at your wedding. So you would have to submit your lyrics of any of the music that you are having in your ceremony. For me, I just like to know because 
when I'm writing your script, I listen to the music and I get in the groove and I get your vibe and um, it enriches the writing process. So decide which country you want to have your wedding in because it might be different from where you get your marriage license. Your marriage, if you're getting married in the UK and you don't want all the fuss, you just want to do the legals, like you would register birth, death, marriage, like you would register all those three, you ask for the two by two registration of marriage and it's about 50 quid each. So you get married for under hundred pounds, hundred pounds ish. Um, depends on the borough. There is a bit of a postcode pricing on marriage, which is crazy. Um, and then depending what country you're in, you can either get married by your celebrant, but in England, you don't, you don't get married, 50 quid, and then have your celebrant. Then your celebrant can be a civil, which is just where they trained. But the basic difference, the fundamental difference is humanist, which is actively agnostic and bring their own doctrine, which might be completely in line with yours. Or you go for independent, which is me, which is I am your private supplier, so I will deliver your thoughts and your beliefs and your faith and your truth in your script of your story. Um, the other thing is inside outside. Again, if you have a registrar, they have little text in the uh, terms and conditions that they will not perform a marriage in inclement weather. Now, what's inclement weather? You might be way more hardy. Um, I did a wedding with a very, very, very fabulous um, bride and groom, and she was super duper horsey. She was coming up the aisle on her big fat pony, gorgeous shire horse almost. He was enormous, um, called Thunder and Hamish. And she was like, I'm coming in my boots and we're having a wedding outside, come rain or shine, because we are weatherproof along with every animal on the planet. <laughs> so that's fine. I just had a spare outfit in case I got soaked um, because I'm also weatherproof and I don't necessarily say I'm not going to do your wedding because of inclement weather. So if you are having a registrar and you are getting hoping to get married outside, just be aware that you won't know what they think inclement weather is until they're on site. So you might have to change your plan within 15 minutes of your wedding. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? <laughs> Um, so obviously I'm biased to an independent celebrant because it's win-win and weatherproof. Um, you get what you want and it's your story. Um, and the other thing to, to bear in mind is if you particularly want a person to be your celebrant, that might not be a professional. Obviously I'm biased to the professional. Hire me, you get a brilliant job. Um, but a lot of my clients actually because i used to run theater i've got a theater background they're also they are on stage rather than the building um and so they have literally joey from friends who is an actor and they're like no they can totally perform but actually can you do the script please um and so i would behave and create the ceremony as if i was taking it so i'd meet them we do the questionnaires i create the ceremony i'd even do the rehearsal with their person their celebrant um and then it's just not me on the day and then i feel this like awful sense of missing out i'm like how did it go how did it go um so there is also that ghostwriter script writing service which not many celebrants do um but i've, I've been in the game for 11 years um and i love it i love it i love it and it just means that i get to say I get to say yes and couples that are really trying to work out what works for them don't get hit by no's i'm a i'm a yes girl um so that is quite a detailed in-depth diving in to what is celebrancy who is a celebrant what can they do what do they deliver and who is right for you so hopefully that was helpful obviously there's more on the gram there's more on my website LinkedIn, Pinterest, blah, blah, blah. I'm everywhere. Um, so next week, hopefully I'll be back in my office in my, although I did choose this one, but it's slightly more masculine, but it's still a bit girly because I come in here from time to time. Anyway, lots of love. Take care and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.